Hey everybody, how's it going? Ah, so we're back again to add in to our Bronco series. Funny story, let me share a funny story with you actually that happened to me today. Uh, I'm not sure what order you're watching these videos in or if you've even seen that there's other Bronco related videos on my on our channel. Um, <clears throat> but I've been doing a lot of work on the back. Did the uh, receiver, the tow receiver uh, on the back, the flagpole on the back, and I've still got to do the wiring harness. Maybe I've already done it. Again, depends on when you've seen this. But you might notice that I had put like painter's tape over my license plate. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. I don't know why I did that. Everybody else does it, covers up their license plate number, but it's not like it's just not out in the public or anything. But um, so funny story today, I went down to a buddy of mine's shop that the Bronco will be visiting next week and I am so excited about that. But um, afterwards I went and got some lunch and I'm sitting there and as I'm walking out, there's a police officer in there and he's getting his tea and I'm getting mine and kind of looks at me and I was wondering why he was looking at me like that. And then I walk outside and I go to the Bronco and he comes out and he's like, excuse me, sir. And I was like, yes. And he said, hey, can I ask you a question? And I was like, yeah, of course. And he said, why do you have tape covering up your license plate? This brilliant guy had been riding around for a good three days now with the tape still covering up my license plate. Like shocked that I wasn't pulled over and that probably looked really bad. But anyway, I explained to him that I was making some YouTube videos and um, it's actually kind of funny. He, he was like, oh, I'm thinking about doing that. And I haven't done that, but uh, but I, I was, so we kind of talked about that and it was a really cool and I took that off. So now again, I don't know why I'm covering up my license plate, but I am, I, I don't know. But anyway, so what do we want to talk about today is if you've noticed in a lot of my videos when I'm working on the Bronco, one thing that's always kind of frustrating is like I got to set up a little table or set up a little stool like this, kind of put stuff out. And I wanted to remedy that and thought there would be no better way than to do one of the tailgate tables, um, which I have not put on yet. That's what we're going to do here today. Uh, I know a lot of people are putting subwoofers back here. I actually have the sub system. I don't have the B&O system. I have something much better, but the sub that was that came from the factory is in there. And I am probably going to add a, a small hideaway sub here just to add a little bit extra kick too. But um, anyway, so we're going to address the tailgate table today, put that in, then I will no longer need this little guy. So. Let's go take a look at it. enough. So there are a lot of tailgate tables available for the Bronco and I was trying to decide which one to go with and again I don't know where you're watching in the series of my Bronco videos but I've ordered a lot of products from Mabit and I've had a lot of great success with them. They, I haven't had any issues with any of the products. The quality has been great. The packaging great. Um, probably to be honest with you, the thing that I am sold so much on Mabit for is there's a Facebook group that's made by Mabit and the guy that's on there, Jason Wang is just really responsive. I, I don't honestly, I don't know if he owns the company or if I don't know, he's just an engineer, but the guy like just is, he's wanting feedback from Bronco owners. He's wanting suggestions. And like, I've made suggestions of things that they should make for the Bronco. And I think he's actually making them. Like it's, it's, it's really cool to find a company, a manufacturer 
that cares that much about the end users that they actually want their honest feedback in. And that's just something that has really sold me on this company. And I'll be honest, if I'm looking for an accessory for the Bronco, they're probably gonna be the first people I look at. They're definitely gonna be in the top three uh, when it comes to considering which products I wanna go with. So again, this is the Mabit tailgate table. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'll tell you, I, I know it's heavy duty. I weighed it before I came out here. It was 35 pounds in the box. So let's take a look and see what we got. This is new. I haven't, haven't seen anything packaged this nicely yet. Just first impression, even without taking it out of the box, looks really high quality. God, that thing is heavy. I mean, that's <clears throat> that's where all the 35 pounds were. It's not it's not in these boxes. I can tell you that. All right, so let's let's take a look. All right, so as you can see, and this thing looks looks solid. Instructions: <clears throat> rear door tailgate table. I love again that there is a parts list visual parts list always recommend verifying that you have all your pieces before you start the install because there's nothing worse than not having the parts that you need all right so i got all my parts separated we are good all right got my parts got the hardware got the instructions let's go to the bronco God. oh that suck is heavy all right, hopefully the last time I have to use that table. Normally I got stuff back here, but I just unloaded what was back here in my friend's shop. I'm super excited about for an upcoming video, or you may have already seen the video. Um, so I can use this for now, but normally I don't have this option. So let's go ahead and get started. As an Air Force veteran, uh, where I was a electrician and environmental specialist on F-16s, I am a big fan of instructions and following instructions. Because if I didn't in the Air Force, somebody could have died. And I would have got also, no, let's just stick with somebody could have died. That's way worse than what could have happened to me. But um, let's see. We're going to go by this step by step. And see how it goes and then we'll give you the review all right so our first step is to remove the black square above the tailgate now I saw this in another video always start on the bottom do not start on the top because I believe there's clips on the bottom and then there's like little hooks up here that we're gonna lift so we will learn together De definitely recommend panel tools if you don't have some. Super cheap on Amazon. Oh. Bam! Did it, and we did not break any of our top clips. So, thanks for the tip. We're not breaking the tip. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> you just used the Michael Scott gift, didn't you? Not surprised. All right, next. As shown in the picture after removing the black square, the holes that need to be installed. It's gonna be this hole, this hole, this hole, and this hole. Install the brackets in the order shown in the figure. Now, one thing I'll go ahead and comment on this. On the instructions on the parts list, I wish they would have labeled letters by the, the parts, really just the, the, uh, the screws and the washers. It, they, it looks like they use the same images, but people could get confused and use the wrong one and it just wastes some time. Um, so that would just be one suggestion I would make to improve the instructions. Now, here's just another side note. This is the Mabit rear cargo uh, protector, which I absolutely love. The backs of these um, are super nice. Uh, I, I love the way they look, the way they feel, everything about them. And what's great about it is I can dump my parts here and I'm not worried about them falling out. So that's a good thing. Um, again, 
military in me, I'm, I, I like to separate all my parts so they're all together. So I'm not just like randomly searching. So yeah, it takes a little bit of time on the front end, but saves me time on the back end. I'm not gonna make you watch this. So again, just me laying out the parts so I can easily identify them. Just a little tip. All right, so here's a little side note while we're doing this. If anybody has a good recommendation of a wireless mic that works well with the iPhone, please let me know because I cannot stand this one. Sucker flips and does all this other stuff and I have to like put power to it to get it to turn on. It, it's just, it's not a great product. Not one I would recommend by any means. So if you have a good suggestion, please leave it in the comments below. That'd be fantastic. All right, so we're gonna be using the two larger brackets first, the longer skinny bolts first, and the thicker of the spacers that go in. And it looks like it is the smaller washer. Okay, so first lesson learned, it's actually the smaller piece that goes on this. Wanna go ahead and get these started and just repeat for the second one. Now for this part, what you're doing, hopefully you can see this, we're sliding these in, then we're turning them 90 degrees. Then we're gonna apply a little pressure and pull back on them and start to screw in. Now they're gonna turn So we'll, we'll better adjust when we get closer. We'll leave it a little loose just because we don't know exactly what position we need to be at if we need to be far left, far right, center. I'm assuming we'll figure that out as we go, but I'm just gonna have these kind of loosely put in now. We're just gonna repeat on the other side. I'm not gonna make you watch that. Another good reason to read the instructions, it tells you in the next steps that the one on the left needs to be far right, the one on the right needs to be far left. So we're just gonna do that. So I'm really glad about that because that makes it easier. You're not having to guess within that area of where it needs to be. There you go. Now the next step is to take the smaller bracket. Say again, that's the only problem with not labeling, listing the, the hardware, which one you're supposed to be using. It's just pictures, but I'm doing process of elimination looks like you're gonna need four for this and on the bottom one two there's more than four so there we go we're gonna roll with the larger screws and I'm going to assume but I'm going to read the directions okay as I thought washer and larger piece of this we're going to place those on both ends. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. You know, I really enjoy doing stuff like this. I've got ADHD real bad and had it my whole life. Got me in a lot of trouble as a kid. But doing stuff like this, like following directions and having something to do with my hands, just like something about it just kind of calms me. So I look forward to doing installations like this and sharing it with you guys. So again, I hope it helps you out. But regardless, I enjoy doing it. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch it. And now we return you to our regular scheduled program. All right. So now that those brackets are built, just like the top ones, Looks like we're gonna be installing them down here. So all we're gonna do is the same thing we did up here pretty much. We're just gonna put these in horizontally, turn them vertically, put a little pressure behind them just to get it started. One, one thing to watch out for is don't get your finger pinched in there. You can definitely see that happening doing it the way I was just doing it. Definitely want to make sure the one closest to the panel here, this side of the door, is 
all the way. This one is all the way far right. The one on the inside of the door all the way far, far left. Just gonna repeat for the other side. Another little tip for you. Instead of putting it in with it all the way up there, help yourself out. Spin that sucker where it's not got much room to go. Make it easier once you get it in there. Just a little tip. Another tip, use the panel tool, stick it in there as you're tightening. That way it'll prevent the piece in the back from not being at that 90 degree angle that you need. All right, now all four brackets are installed. Again, just so you know, when you before you tighten everything, make sure that the this one is pushed all the way right before you tighten it, this one all the way left, and on the bottom, it's opposite. This one all the way right, this one all the way left. Open that up. Nice. Whoa, this thing is way bigger than I thought. And it's got two cup holders. Man, y'all look at this. I didn't even know it had cup holders on the top. That's awesome. I bet a beer would fit really good right there. That actually sounds really good right now. Man, would you believe that? nice okay all that's left is screw here screw here screw here screw here screw here screw here six screws and guess what i got six screws and six washers let's get this thing on see how it works now this part might be fun by myself but uh we're gonna do it anyway i'm gonna go ahead and preload my screws and washers so I'm not sitting there trying to do that and hold this beast up at the same time hoping I can get the top ones in enough without dropping them that'll make it easier for the remaining four let's go ahead and have everything ready all right let's roll sucker is heavy there we go knee game strong come on baby let's get started yes all the holes are lining up that was it's always a scare i do like that there's a little bit of play in these holes up here they're not just the same size as the screws so you got a little play in them all i'm wanting to do right now is get these things started now the magic of video editing all right that is it uh that was a pretty simple install uh you know really easy the only tool i needed was a phillips head screwdriver uh or drill whatever um and i'd say maybe 30 minute install give or take so let's take a look at it. This is literally going to be the, you are going to witness the first time that I play with the features and take a look at it. Um, shaking it. I don't hear any rattling. We'll, we'll go for a ride here in a minute and we'll, I'll put the microphone actually back here. See if we hear anything. I don't think there's going to be anything. Um, all right. So let's take a look. See, first thing, let me open these up. Bam. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna say is, what's really cool that I like, you've already seen the cup holders on the top, but there's like these little pockets here on the side that I did not even realize. That's pretty sweet. Just a little bit of extra storage. Um, you know, good space here. Wait, what is this? No way. Did not even know that happened. It's got a pull out. That is sweet. 
All right, I'm impressed. One thing I did like about this one over the majority of the ones I saw was this one has the sides. Um, I just like that because I, I, I always worry about stuff like falling off. Not that it's going to be, you're going to be riding around or anything, but still, regardless of what you're doing, cooking, working with tools, um, I think this is, it's nice to have those on the sides. I did not even know that pulled out and you witnessed it same time I did. So that's pretty sweet. Um, I noticed that the, you know, besides the openings, kind of the molly pattern and this one, there's small holes. I don't know what that's for. Another thing I did notice, tell me what you guys think. I saw this, this circle here and I was like, man, I, I wonder, I thought it was a light at first. It's not. And I began wondering what it was. Well, it's, it's a magnet. So I don't know what the magnet is for. I think it's smart to have it there. Actually, I think it would be kind of cool if there was like a, a whole magnet bar back here that you could put your tools up, keep it off of here. So as you're working, you can just grab your tools. That might be, that's an easy add though. I could, that could be something I could add on. So I'm not sure what the magnet is for. Let me know in the comments what you think it's there for, but um, solid built. I, I love the look, obviously. I mean, it, it like pretty much matches my, <laughs> my carbonized gray. But um, I think it's going to look good no matter what, which Bronco you've got. Let's see, closing it up. That simple. And I like that you've got to put a little bit of pressure on this. There's actually some rubber mounts on the inside. That's going to keep from help with the vibrations. But you've got to push this in to lock it. And I like that. That's There's a rubber mount there too. That's nice. But... um. Looks good. No issues with the closing. I didn't hear anything. So let's go for a quick ride. And like I said, I'm gonna put the microphone back here and uh, let's see how, if there's any rattle to it. All right, here we go. Now the next test will be if my tripod will not fall over. Here we go, bumpy. Coming out of the driveway. Damn. 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 Um, damn, man. Damn. Damn. Damn it. Damn. Come on, man. Damn. I'm going to purposely hit a bunch of bumps. So good so far so far so good all right so let's talk about the the table um honestly i'm not even gonna lie to y'all when i first purchased this i didn't even know if i was gonna like it i didn't know if i was gonna use it very often but after installing it and discovering these things um i'm i'm really impressed i uh, i think i'm gonna use this a lot more than i thought i was going to uh, for camping, for working, um, there, there's just so many possibilities. I, I don't even know yet. Uh, for the road test, I don't know if you saw or not, the camera didn't like the tripod too much, but um, there was no road noise, none. No rattle, no anything. So uh, again, I'm really impressed with that. Uh, this, the ease of use is, is gonna be nice. So just, found, I'm an idiot. So the magnet is to keep that up. That should have known that. Again, that's brilliant. And it keeps it up. So you're not having to worry about like if you're up on a hill and it falling backward, yeah, that makes total sense. Makes total sense. Ease of use, closing it up little rubber post here is what helps to keep it from not rattling also you have to kind of push it in a little bit which I like put some tension on it to close it same on both sides I think it's solid 
Um, I give it a nine out of 10, to be honest with you. Uh, the only hit I got against it is I wish that in the instructions, that on the parts list, that the hardware was labeled. Other than that, I mean, it's not hard to figure out by any means. I mean, it's literally, what was it, like 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It was 14 screws total. That's it for the entire install. Um, so, again, great job, Mabit. Great job, Jason. Uh, really impressed with the product. You know, if you like what you saw, definitely please, you know, support support the channel, subscribe, give us a like, share this in the Bronco forums, definitely in all the different Bronco Facebook groups so people can see this and kind of make the decision for themselves. There's a lot of these tables on the market. I can't see one being better than this, honestly. Uh, I, I just don't, I don't see it happening. If you want to purchase this, I'll actually put a link to this in the description. It's on Amazon. Uh, so go ahead and click below. Other than that, Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it informative, entertaining a little bit, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. So until then, catch you on the flip side.